When I booked my first taxi to come to Milan, I made a mistake. I made a mistake because I paid 115 euros for a 30 minute taxi ride, which is obviously crazy expensive. When I failed my first exam, I made a mistake. And when I failed my second exam, I also made a mistake. When I got on the bus with no ticket, a ticket that by the way cost two euros and I got fined 40 euros for it, I made a huge mistake, obviously. When I got to Milan, I knew I was gonna make a ton of mistakes in Italy. When I got to uni, I was like, I'm gonna make a ton of mistakes here in, Italy, uh, here in, here in school, here at Humanitas. And when I stepped into the classroom on the first day of year one, I knew I was gonna make a ton of mistakes in year one. And honestly, I did. And these are the top three. Mistake number one was um, studying too much, which sounds either like clickbait or uh, me like humble bragging, but it really isn't. It was a big mistake because I put quantity above quality. And even if I did spend five, 10, 15 more hours studying than my classmates or my friends, which might not even be the case, the results at the, at the end of the semester, the results weren't there. Even though I, according to myself, should have been so much more prepared because I studied so much more. When I sat down next to the, like in front of the exam, so I didn't pass one exam and I haven't yet passed. Well, I have classmates obviously that have passed all their exams and classmates that have passed them um, like less exams. But the point is that instead of doing what a lot of people were doing, which was enjoying the first few weeks of term where classes are somewhat easy and somewhat chill, and just going out, having fun, going out to dinner, to brunch, whatever. I just sat down and studied, 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 thinking that just by sitting down in front of a book and reading passively or doing my questions or whatever, I could achieve great results and great success, which turned out to not only not be the case, but be the opposite of the case. Because by the time exam season rolled up, not only was I overconfident and completely wrong about how much I knew, I was kind of, not physically burnt out, but I was burnt out more mentally, as in I didn't want to study anymore because I felt like I didn't need to. But as the last couple of days before the exam came and I started like reading, revising, I realized how little I knew and it was just a massive cramming session at the end of the semester, which was honestly, not something I would ever recommend to anybody. Sometimes it happens, um, but yeah, terrible. Well, how one mistake, which was not studying correctly or studying too much, um, led to a bunch of other mistakes um, that could have been avoided and I hope to avoid this second year. And mistake number two is basically approaching lessons the wrong way. And by that I mean that halfway through semester one, I was taking notes, uh, which you saw in this video over here and I was doing all that and I was really content with what I was doing but it was a lot of work and I just stopped I, was, I, I missed a couple or three days of, of, of like space repetition and they piled up and I gave up and I kind of stopped taking notes because I knew I wasn't gonna revise them and I stopped listening to the teacher and when I was taking notes it wasn't about what the teacher was saying it was about what was on the slides. And then if even if something was on the slides and I was trying to pay attention to the teacher and the teacher was talking, I would write what was on the slides. And then when I went back to the teacher, they had moved on or they were talking about something else or they had skipped a few slides. And then it'd be like, okay, I'm lost. I'll just follow this lecture later in my house because they were recorded at the time. And then I would go to the lecture and scrolling through a two hour lecture would be too much for me. And it just got to the point where I wasn't really trying to follow the lectures. I would just sit in class, usually towards the back, and I would half listen to the teacher, but what I would really be doing is looking down at my screen, looking at the slides that the teacher was talking about and just taking notes out of the slides, which is a terrible piece of, um, well, this is an advice, um, but it's a terrible piece of, uh, it's a terrible thing to do when you have the teacher who is an invaluable resource in class right in front of you, mainly because you can stop them, ask them questions, ask them to explain a different way, which you can't do with a book when you're studying at home or with your notes or with the slides. 
And so giving up on the teacher or yeah, giving up on the teacher because of what I was perceiving to be reality, which at the end of the day wasn't true and it was just me not wanting to work, um, was one of the gravest mistakes I made because it was, again, a cascade of, of consequences that, I, that were unpleasant for me and led to me not having passed an exam yet and having to do it with the, a few of my second year exams, um, which should be fine, hopefully, but it's just an added hassle that if I hadn't made this mistake, probably wouldn't have happened. And finally, mistake number three is less about what happened inside the classroom and more about what happens outside of the classroom and it's sticking to my comfort zone, which I think is something we've all been guilty of like honestly not I think it's, it's it's hard to always be outside of your comfort zone but I thought that moving from Mexico to Italy was already a big enough step and I could just sit back and kind of stay in my comfort zone and things would go fine and things did go fine but they could have been more than fine if I had been a bit more willing to branch out and talk to new people and go to new places and try new things and just take advantage of already being put out of my comfort zone passively by moving and, 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 and taking a more active role in that by going up to people, hoping pe and instead of hoping people come up to you, which I do still hope people just come up to me because I love talking to like random people, but like you going up to people and saying, hey, what's your name? Hey, how are you? Going out by like traveling by yourself. I went to Malta at the end, which was really cool. There's a vlog up there somewhere. Um, which I really enjoyed because it was, I'd never traveled like fully by, that's not true, I had traveled once to, to Madrid but this was different because I had to figure out everything by myself and I don't speak, um, well I spoke, I spoke Spanish when I went to Madrid and I don't speak uh, Maltese and um, anyway, yes, putting yourself out of your comfort zone, I, okay, putting myself out of my, uh, out of my comfort zone is, is one of the things that I hope to do with this upcoming year two, meeting new people, meeting the new people, meeting the people in the year above me, even meeting a lot of my classmates because with 180 of us, it's hard to meet everybody. But anyway, yeah, just, just doing that and, and not being afraid to explore, to be like told no or, or, or to be looked at like you're a bit weird. It's, it's really fine. And now that I'm going into second year, I hope to learn from what I did in first year. And hopefully when I go into third year, I'll do better than I did in, third, in, in second year. So yeah, I look forward to doing better this year and in around a year's time, let's see um, if I make a video on the mistakes I did in third year and if they're more or less grave than this one and we'll catch you guys then. You guys should go watch this video.